Hey, and welcome to the show. This show is brought to you by Patreon members like you. Thank you for being a Patreon member. As a Patreon member, you get a video of the podcast that we put out twice a month. Now, on with the show. Oh, wow. Okay. Apparently. Yeah. That's cool. Good, huh? Nothing is on. <clears throat> I love that. That's so cool. Oh, yeah. Love that. I think we gotta get different shares. Yeah, they, they know you know. These are noisy. I'm gonna get something different. Need to find some cool chairs. So from Connecticut. What's PA. going on, PA? I should check the air compressor. What's up, Bill? Hey, Johnny. Hey, the air compressor's off. Yes, hey. I turned it off. What's up, Mike? What's up, Mr. Uh... Freeman? Oh, yeah, what's up, what's sucky up? Monday. Yeah, yeah, what's you could say that. You could say it was a sucky Monday. Yes, it was. I mean, yeah, we're gonna go with that. Mm-hmm. These nuts in the nose. What's going on? Oh my gosh. So how was your weekend, buddy? Uh, it was good. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? I went to Disney. Um, yeah. Yeah? That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, honestly it wasn't. It was packed beyond really? belief. Yeah, there was some kind of marching band convention there. Okay. Kind of like when we were at the airport and we saw those marching band people. Oh, wow. Apparently they were, they, they were, oh my god, there was tons and tons of, of them. And it was really funny. Wow. Um, what's going on, man? Um, so, see you second you. week in April. Got something for you to do. Sounds good. Um, audio control epicenter 600. All right, Mike, thank you. Good or bad. Actually, it's funny you should ask about the, uh, all right. Just, I'm going to show the top guy on the guy. What's up from Cincinnati? Oh, wow. It doesn't exist anymore. It doesn't exist anymore, so I no, bought our last I... one because I, I felt like this was something I should have. So, yeah, I love this amplifier. Yep. I almost bought the big one. Actually, Bill still got the big one. Gee. Nolte! <laughs> I want to be in a marching band. <laughs> I want to be a magic man. Forget a marching band. No. Um, so, no, that it's, a, it's an awesome amplifier for sure. Yep. Um, uh, out of work, just getting ready for other job. Damn it. Oh, man, it sucks. Yeah, me too. Almost out of here. Hello from Michigan. Yeah. And then I got to go do my other job, which is editing for the rest of the night. Oh, don't let me forget, we got to film. So every now and then, you know, it's funny. I'll, I'll talk about it here, but it'll be in the video that we're going to put up. We, If you guys caught the photo of the Camaro where we put the T-Series amplifiers in the back. Mm-hmm. Um, there was another video we did um, where we had filmed something and we had some issues with it. It was like four o'clock in the morning and it, it turned out the SD card had recorded a corrupt file and Final Cut Pro won't export a corrupt file. You have to find that file, you have to delete it. Yep. And it sucks. And of course now we know. Well, we took that SD card, we put a big silver dot on it and we're like, okay, we'll never have another problem with this again. But if we do, we know it's this one. And we've yeah. used it many times and it's never been a problem. Well, we used it the other day on that Camaro, and for the first three scenes we shot with it, it apparently was giving us grief. And by the time we shot the fourth scene, the camera was like, I'm over this. And I was like, oh, crap. So I offloaded the footage, and I threw the card away, because I was like, I don't need this anymore. So then that last night, <laughs> I'm going to edit, and that's why there was no show today, because I spent till 2 o'clock in the morning the trying highest. to salvage What's that, the Ada? first three minutes of footage yep. from the show. Mm -hmm. So, yay, I got most of it, and I got most of the audio, so it yeah. is going to be an interesting little edit to try to put this, but at the front there'll be like a disclaimer. Like a little lack. Yeah, yeah. like, oh man, this sucks, sorry. But yep. it, it, it's funny because it's a long video. We shot all day, we had a bunch of stuff in that, but it's like <laughs> the first three minutes of it just, ugh. Yeah. What's all up, right. John? So, uh, Western, what steering wheel do you recommend to keep everything on a Nissan? Yeah. 
So steering wheel controls. There's basically three big steering wheel controls out there. You have, as Adam would say, he loves the Metra AW whatever, access steering wheel control. Mm -hmm. Then PAC makes three steering wheel control modules that make the RC, the CP2, and the CP5. Mm -hmm. And then iData makes what I'm going to probably say is the easiest out of all three of them because you just plug it into your computer, you hey, tell it what Lori. you want it to do. Lori. Hey, you still got to talk, Lori. Um, and you just plug it in your computer and you tell it what you want it to do and then you put out the instructions and you put it in the car. Mm -hmm. That's how Lewis. I, I feel like that's probably the easiest one out of the bunch. Um, I'm an SWRC guy, just mm -hmm. like Ada is the access guy. Hey John. And and everyone knows how to work. We we know how to work those and we're good. Lori, don't go oh, anywhere. Lori, you gotta yes, stay. Yes, you gotta stay. We gotta I'm gonna finish this, then I'm gonna show it. Stay, stay, Lori. Um, and yeah, exactly. The, I feel like the RR, the, the iData Maestro steering wheel control it's is easy. probably the, the, takes the two and makes and combines them all together. Mm -hmm. So I feel if you've never done a steering wheel control, I think your first foray into it would definitely be good if you went with the iData. Yep. And with that all being right. said, since Lori Let's was here, Lori, you guys know Lori because What's she up, is exactly. from Stillwater, CP2. Oklahoma. And this little company here just happens to be from Stillwater, Oklahoma, too. Now, ah, I'll pull my shirt down. The reason why I'm holding it like this, and you're thinking, hey man, that just looks like an old school Solberg 10 inch driver. Yeah. And for the most part, from this angle, you'd be like, yeah. Now, thanks to John Schneid, you guys know John Schneid, he's our kicker rep, and basically works for Lori. <laughs> I'm gonna they say, work I, together. Okay. Yeah, okay, you okay. go with that. I was thinking the other thing. <laughs> he found this, and he was like, I know you guys are going to really like this. And I was like, ah, uh, yeah. Let me turn this thing around. Ugh. This is the backside of this heavy. Yeah. Okay. So for those of you that are classic, classic, classic old school car stereo guys, and for those of you that aren't and are young, look up the person, Elma Gates. Elma Gates is one of the godmothers, we'll say, of the DB drag race. This is one of the woofers out of her monstrosity. This has been kicked around and somehow he found it and he was like, I'm taking this because this is a part of 12 volt history for sure. And he was kind enough to be like, hey guys, this would look really awesome sitting on your shelf. And I was like, yes. Yeah, yeah I say it would. Yes. Yeah. So what's up, Dave? <laughs> what's up, Dave? From the Kip and Dave show. There again, Dave. kicker. Look at that. Um, so we have we have this guy. And this is cool. This heavy? So you can it's very heavy. As you can see here. Like they wrote on it for positive and negative because you can't see the bottom of the terminals. So it's got silver Sharpie on there to hold that. That's amazing. So, so that's history. Right it's, there. it's history. Now this, this guy is done. The, the spider on it has collapsed and there's no rebuild kit for it. So it's not like it can, it can ever be brought back and the magnet has shifted from getting abused. It's, so the magnets aren't stacked properly anymore. You can kind of see that, but. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because this is a part of 12 volt history and it's yes. just freaking awesome. Yes, there's, it is. There's nothing like this. So look her up, uh, see what she did. She was an amazing person for this industry. And this is really cool. So we'll have this in the back of a couple of videos. You guys will see it and you can ask us what it is. And well, for those of you that are smart enough to watch this show, you'll know. I'm gonna put it down because this is really freaking heavy. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh my gosh. Oh, you know what? You know what have it. Oh, here, hold on, I wanna do this. Yes. So here. Okay. This is that's now. Really nice All right. So this is a 12. So that's that new L7 sexy blue stitch guy. That's, that's now the Q. The Q. Yeah. And this is then. So we got a cool little now. I'm gonna set it right here. This is heavy. So there you go. That's that's now and Zen. Oh wait, no, that's a Robert Plant song. <laughs> so there you go. Look at them bad boys. Wow. Right. Okay. Nothing like old school. Yeah. All right. That's pretty cool. Look at that. Damn. That's why I run. I don't like the lift. Did I drop the F-bomb? Hope not. Oh, you dropped the F-bomb. Awesome lady. Awesome lady. Yes, she was. And Fernando just learned about her. I just, I just, I just, I'm like, I want to see her picture or something, you know? And it's, it's crazy. The, the Bronco that she had, that's like, wow. Insane. Um, yeah. So. Oh, we know it's you, Dave. What's we up, know Dave? It's you, yep. Dave. Oh my gosh, I gotta crack my back. Oh, okay. Stop. So, oh, dude, that was heavy. Holy crap. So, anyways, 
Um, we thought we'd, we'd share that with you, and we want to thank John uh, for, of course, bringing that to us today and letting us. Yeah. Um, we're, we're just, I don't know. We're going to find some special place to put it because it's special. Oh, and definitely. I, I'm, I'm just like I have that last. You just say that's from the 90s. So yeah, uh, well, yeah, yeah. Haha, thanks. Uh -huh, that's from, crazy. from the 90s. Just like I have that epicenter amplifier because yeah. it's they're gone. Sorry, I, I, I have that now. <sighs> Oh, okay. yes, I did. Okay, my bad. Um, you can drive it. Couple of squares. Ooh, that was a good one. Any word on the Kenwood 9906 release date? Uh, Bill, any word on the 99, uh, <laughs> 9906 release date? I'm having a hard time Kenwood. deciding between waiting for the Kenwood and getting the Pioneer 8-inch. Uh, yeah. uh, any vids on the Pioneer coming anytime soon? Funny you should ask. So, yes, there is. So, right now... Today was an interesting day for us, and that's why Monday sucked, because the last week was, was real torture for us, because mm -hmm. getting back from Knowledge Fest, and we had three, three huge jobs that we had to do, um, three two-day jobs um, that we had to do, and that was tough, plus you know the little fill-ins between there. And then we ran into a couple issues, uh, software issues, and so it was, the, the week didn't exactly end on a high note, and, yeah. and Saturday I was sick as a dog, um, the show wasn't going the way I wanted it to. Right, still sick. Um, yeah, but not like it was Saturday. Saturday okay. I was dead. Anyways, so coming in today, it was dealing with everything that was left over from Saturday. And one of the things it, what I thought was funny is I was telling Fernando, and I couldn't even tell him because every, like, I had one thing I needed to get done today, and that was write the overview for the 4500. Yeah. And actually, we were planning on filming it today so we could just scratch that one off. And that never happened. And, and I got like one line done. Uh, this month on the 9906. Thank you, Bill. There you go. So there you go. <clears throat> now, we have them in stock, not the 996. We have the Pioneers in stock. And yep. once the 996 comes in, we're going we're gonna to film that. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, next month will be perfect on the 996 because maybe then the Camaro iData kit will be here. And then we and can I can put just it put in your that car. in my yeah. car like yeah. I want to. Yeah. Speaking of radios going in cars. Now normally we save this stuff for Saturday and this will be the sponsor of the Saturday show, but I just wanted to look at that. Hey, Ida, look at that. So I want to thank Tazi at Sony for sending uh, Fernando a unit to review. This is not ours. This is a no. strict review unit. Um, yep. But as soon as we got the chance, um, that, that's, that's coming. So yep. we're real excited about that. I gotta buy some high res music now, or find someone conveniently enough. Mike, to give me some high res music, Mike, to play with. Bill. Mike, yeah. Um, uh, so, anyways, what's your opinion on two Morel Primos yes. and a Fox, the Fox Box? Box. Oh, oh man, is that right? Is that the yes, that, that's the big one. Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ! I, I do. This seems like really huge, but I don't know. Hold on. Jesus, man. Oh my God. Look at that. Off camera. All right, so for those of you that don't know this what a the, Primo wait. is, oh, this is the Ultimo. This My is bad. the Ultimo. Maybe yeah. you made me dig that out for nothing. There you go. Uh, so the Primo is a step down. The Primo should fit fine. But you know what? Hey, since we had the Ultimo out. All right, fine, Jeff. Yeah. I didn't dig that all out for nothing. We're going to make the, uh, we're gonna make the review and everything. So uh, right, right now we're shopping for a dash kit. You've never seen. This is now. This is a totally different animal from that cool kicker we just looked at. This is a totally different. Animal. First off, I can actually hold it, but look at that cone. Isn't that sexy? Ooh, look at it sparkle. But this backside. This is what makes it amazing, right here. This has a. F look at that copper. Look at that copper. That's a five-inch voice coil. <laughs> Holy God. Yeah, that's right. Five inches of voice coil on this monster. Oh, yeah. I'm having a Doug moment here. I'm not going to lie. Anyways, so this is this is the higher-end one. Oh, hey, Jen. Very nice. You're welcome. Oh, you got your shirts. Nice. You got the only pair. And Jen got the special shirts because those don't exist. Actually, I think we have. Those are the shirts I got yeah. copies of us for for Knowledge Fest. So. Oh, there you go. Jeff have plenty of high res. Perfect. I'm stopping by tonight. <laughs> um, yeah. So, there we go. All right, what else you guys want to see? <laughs> hey, Casey, Sounds what's flushing. going on, Casey? Hey, what's going um, on? Titanium. Is that what yeah. it is? Titanium? Okay. 
So, yeah. Right, so on. just just bring with the stuff that you have to put in the car. Hang now, on. Another cool thing about that woofer, I'm not gonna lie, this is one of the coolest things about that that Morel woofer is it comes with this grill. I love this. All grill. right. No, no. I'll pass you no, this. Let's save that. Let's save that. Okay. Boom. Any ideas on installing three-way components and a 2017 Malibu? Yeah, that's Morel lamp. Um, you're probably gonna have to build some kind of a pillar or a kick. Maybe a kick? Hey, from Desto, what's up, Bismarck? Um, okay, gotta gotta go. See you guys. Bye, Rudy. It was nice seeing you. Hi guys, can I buy an Alpine ILX 259 from you as can get it? Oh, no, Paul will not ship out of the United States. So, um, Christopher just made, <laughs> it looks a big subwoofer, no. Uh, Christopher just made something like that. McNulty? Yes. With his with lasers? The, with the laser and everything, so, that's all right, so no, cool. Grab, grab, the, grab that, grab oh, the yeah. Ultimo. That's what I, that's what I. Okay, so, all right, so that's what you were trying to do? All right, so. All right, look at look at how look how all right. I gotta hold this right. Look how cute that is. Isn't that not the cutest thing you've ever seen? I can hold it. Like it's that. like it's like if you took that Willy Wonka shrink ray to make candy bars bigger or Tilt smaller. It. Tilt it. And there and just just did. Uh, it's so adorable. I mean, now this is the high frequency mid range. So for those of you, um, this is the new popular thing that a lot of manufacturers are trying to do. And of course, Morel did it before them. Um, so this is a high frequency mid-range. So the idea behind laser this beams, is if you yeah. have like a uh, Toyota Just or... tell him that we need a laser. Who? That we need a laser. Oh, tell me we need a laser? Yeah, you know, I, so I was, I was talking to him about it yeah. all weekend. Hey, Robin, happy birthday. Um, happy birthday, man. Robin, that's... Uh, you, Robin is uh, Mr. Incredible. Okay. Remember Mr. Incredible? The story from Mr. Incredible? The guy who was the... Yeah. That's Robin. Okay. Um, I never forgot Robin. Um, anyways, so, uh, there we go. The, yeah, shrinking rays, cool. Yes, that's the CC, that's the model number, thank you. Uh, do you guys use foam when mounting subs in a sealed box? The only time I use foam when mounting a sub in a sealed box is if the box has rhino liner on. on it. Yeah. Then we'll use it on that because there's, you know, you're not going to get a good connection. But when I'm doing carpet, I've never really had an issue with foam, with the, it leaking out. Mm -hmm. So it's all good there. High right. frequency mid-range, will it fit in a, where did that go? In a GMC Sierra. Yes, yes it will. So X-Man... Uh, yep. uh, who's a who's a commenter viewer and also stopped by here. He lives used to live in Norway, no. which is the Voss water. We've had the yep. Voss water on here before. He brought us the little ones. He stopped back by because he's riding through town. He was like, "I wanted you guys to have the glass bottles, so he brought us some glass bottles of water." So thank I don't you. know what you might be thinking. It's a glass bottle of water, but I'm very sentimental and I like to collect. collect crap like that yeah. that has sentimental meaning. So yeah. when I get stuff like that, I get all kind of blushy and like, oh man, that's so sweet. Because that means you took time out of your day to, Look at that. to think of, of us and, well, that's awesome. Yeah. So very cool there. Oh, and also uh, the Rockford glasses, uh, we had two winners. Haley picked them out. I communicated with them. So if you didn't get a call, I'm sorry, but um, they, <laughs> oh, they you, found you, a you home and I'll be shipping those out later. This one of them's got to go really far. One of them's going to, uh, uh, what did I say? Um, um, say the other uh, side of Australia. What's that other little island over there uh, that James is from? Um, yeah, I told you. New Zealand. New Zealand. So one of them's got to go all the way to New Zealand. <laughs> Thanks, Haley. Um, so yeah, yeah, cool. All right, on 2010 Silverado, if you have to hook up a zero gauge wire to the factory battery, how do you guys do it? Uh, do you just use a ring terminal or the battery terminal? So yeah, most of the time we're just using a ring terminal because they're, they're again, most of the battery terminals are really specific as far as now they build the ring terminals into these funky mounts and they have fuse holders and there's not much you can do. So yes, we're usually, because there's most of the time no other way to do it, is using a ring terminal. All right. Uh, You're have welcome you guys, for the stickers. Have okay. you guys ever what? Encounter? Have you guys ever encountered a problem oh with install that you guys can't find a fix and decide to not continue with that install. Ooh. All right, let me think on that for a second. I can't get my Android Auto to work anymore on my Kenwood. It says it can't communicate with the phone. Any ideas? So, and here's the deal. That, now, this is 
not necessarily an Android issue or an iPhone issue. It's just a general problem that you run into with a phone. When you go in and it's working when you leave, mm -hmm. and then you come back out the next morning and it's not working, the only thing that has changed is your phone more than likely pushed some form of an update. If that's the case, what we suggest, the first thing you want to do is go and check the in this case Kenwood's website or Pioneer Alpine whoever and see if there's any form of an update that has been pushed for it a lot of the times your radio is two or three versions of updates out so for example I just got an email from my buddy Jeff Schultz that works for Pioneer out of New York he sent me an email to tell me hey man all the last generation Pioneer radios are update meaning there's an update so it went from 807 to like 811 so big update so that happens a lot. Uh, yeah, what's up from Australia? Don't give up, don't give up. So updates are key. Now, the other thing that could be, is sometimes it's just a cable goes bad. So like it's been giving you a problem for a while and it's like it's worked, it doesn't work, it works, it doesn't work. So then there you go, try a new cable. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the time it's just an update. What is Bobby asking? What's um, the part number for a Stinger 40 gauge kit OFC with good ANO fuse holder? Oh man. The blue one. Just go to Stinger I mean, if and get the Jeff blue is one. right here, probably he can put the model he's, number he's, of that. Probably already but did. you can go to Stinger.com and just, just check. The, yeah. Get the blue one. The blue one's sexier. It has a better fuse holder in it. Uh, what's okay. the location you guys okay, usually no. tap into? I'm, gonna, I'm coming back to okay. the, the problem. Um, what's the location you guys usually tap into an LOC behind the radio, or good or bad, or do you guys tap speed? So, there again, another good question. Tapping LOCs. I try not to go behind the radio if we're not doing anything else behind the radio. So, because most of the time in, in the cars that we're using LOCs on, there's no reason to go behind the radio. And pulling that dash part is an extra step that I don't want to break anything because sometimes the cars are fragile. So, I'm going to try to get an LOC tapped into somewhere at a speaker, either maybe in the kick panel, the B pillar, or at the rear speaker. If the customer's coming in and it's not a like, hey, dangerous dash, like, no, no, Will Robinson, don't do that. And they're gonna be like, I'm gonna get a radio in like a month or two, and you know, then we'll go, okay, we'll go ahead and pull the radio out, put the LOC behind the radio. Yeah. But most of the time, we're not going behind the radio because there's usually a better place to get it without extensive damage to the car. Now, has there ever been a situation where we've got into a car and we're like, we're tapping out of this? So, yes. Many years ago, many years ago, I had a guy come in. This was when I was at AVE. A guy come in and wanted an alarm in a Porsche. Okay. And at the time, <clears throat> there wasn't direct text. There wasn't anything like that. It was literally the phone books that Aaron brought. Mm -hmm. And there was no Porsche listed in that. My installers at the time were yep. like, there's no way we can do this. Because okay. they didn't know anything about the Porsche. They didn't want to troubleshoot the Porsche. They were scared to death of the Porsche. So we had to tap out and to be like, hey man, sorry, this is out of our wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. um, now, as far as like getting into a car yeah. and then stopping, yeah, yeah, yeah. that doesn't happen. But what we tell people when we're working on cars that are, let's say, brand new, never been worked on before, is we have to test things first. So in a lot of the cases, there's a lot of new cars that have like the ANC automatic noise canceling or fake engine noise yeah. or something like that. and. So it's a brand new car. Like when the 2019 Ford F-150 came out with the yeah. Sony system, no one knew what they were getting into because it was a brand new system. So we found out that the ANC, you either A, have to be up on your Fortran, being able to go in there and decode yeah. that thing, or you have to take it back to the dealer and spend 150 bucks because the dealer sucks, and have them turn that off after threatening to kill their wife and kids because they're like, we can't do it. And we're like, yes, you can. Yeah. So when you run in a situation like that, it's not necessarily saying, no, we can't do it. It's like, no, we can't do it until you do this. So that's usually how that happens. But we try, in situations like that, we try to say, listen, we need to do a bunch of testing and then we'll tell you what we can and can't do. So hope that answers that catch question. Hey, you uh, go. Can you retain the rearview mirror, backup camera, 2000 Super Outback if you install a new nice. Alpine Halo? You should be able to do that just fine. 2011, it's going to be a 6 volt camera. Um, so you're going to need a 6 volt, which would be the Volt 39 from PAC. Mm -hmm. uh, and then just follow any one of the videos where we show you how to retain the backup camera. You Typically welcome, it's four wires. Now, because it is an older one, you might be able to find mm -hmm. either that harness from Skosh yep. or Metro might have that one. 
So give those two a look see. MetroOnline.com and ScotiaOnline.com. What's okay. up, Aaron? Um, sorry for the caps. It's okay, yeah. man. I just figured you were yelling at me to get my attention. Sometimes it works, most of the time it doesn't. Um, 2003 right. NEX. Ever had an issue where after receiving an email, uh, ending a call, the sub channel does not play? Yay! Play music from the iPhone via yeah, wired connection. 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 Firmware update? I would strongly say that is a firmware update. On some of those older units, if you didn't update the firmware, there was some hokey stuff that would happen when using CarPlay and or Android Auto where some of the EQ settings would do strange things like that. Never heard that one specifically, but some really strange stuff. So I would definitely, that was one of the radios I believe that was in the software update. Mm -hmm. Um, so check that out. Uh, Sean, no, we don't do we don't do motorcycles. Uh, Dean is one of those persons that if you, we don't have a lift for a motorcycle, we can do it. Uh, so it's just like no. There's a lot of reasons. It's for a lot it. of reasons. That is yeah, one of, it's just one, one of, of the, the reasons. reasons exactly. So um, no, right. we don't do Harleys. We don't do no motorcycles at all. Uh, well, let's you never see. know. Really? No, I'm joking. <laughs> Uh, what speaker rings do I need for an aftermarket six and a half in a 2013 Jetta? Go ahead and answer. I'm Can gonna I this, look this up here. Hang on. Can the stock wire handle 75 watts? Uh, I'll be a pioneer. Let me see. I have the. Let me see. Hang on. You can check the pack. Packaudio.com, uh, so type just, the model number. So just for your reference, yes, the AVH2300 just got a software update, so it'll bring the unit up to 8.36. That update went out on 3.7 of 2019, so you're definitely going to want to update your unit. Okay, bam. All right, so I have the VKVWSVB, I'm sorry, 1030. We're gonna have to clean up the install bay so, because we're like throwing stuff everywhere. Right there. Um, depends of what type of speaker do you have, am I fit, am I not? Uh, these kind of rings are kind of small. It's so, small, it's like a five and a quarter. No, Maybe no, I like six. That's a six though, yeah. not a six and a half. It depends. There is a difference. Yeah. Uh, the video as far as grounding amps go, if you guys if you guys want to get like the like you want your ground game to be like holy crap ground game guys, this is where you want to go. You want to find this, you can go to this website right here, and then of course you're gonna be like, damn, that's expensive. And I'm sorry. Um, thank you, Mel, for thank putting you, up Mel. that model number. Um, but what this company has is this is really cool for all of you guys that do this stuff for hobby and or living. It really doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Yes, we haven't really sponsored. Sponsored the kit. We really haven't talked about this kit, and I apologize for that. Sometimes we overlook some of the most obvious stuff. The more simple things um, we just. So it comes with this cool tapered drill bit right here. Hold on, let me. Put it next to you. There you go. There you go. So it comes yeah. with this tapered drill bit right here. All right. Ah, there we go. So there's a tapered drill bit, and the reason why it comes with that is because it comes with this and if you'll notice this has that cool little nipple in it so what it is you drill that hole and then this nipple will line up with what you just drilled and it'll give you a nice circle yeah. where the ground would go yeah. and then it comes with these monster self-tapping not self-tapping because you drilled the hole but threaded self-threading screws comes with the nut driver and these will go in there and it comes with the star washer that goes on here and then you put your ring terminal underneath this and then you screw it into the car now, if you, that's enough right there. Like that'll hold anything. But mm -hmm. if you're one of those guys that can actually, or one of those guys like, no, I want, yeah. Um, if you have, and you can get to the back side of it, they also give you nuts so that you can make it a full nut and bolt, never coming loose, crazy ground. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're a Metra dealer, Metra actually, sorry, Mel. If you're a Metra dealer, Metra actually sells these things in, the, in their install bay. Yep. Um, or you can go to that positiveground.com and buy them directly from him. Fun for everyone. Yeah. Uh, that's $135 for a grounding kit. Yes, yes, it is, but you'll never have someone come back with a loose ground. No. Nope. And nope. what is your time worth? Because if you're getting paid, the shop is getting paid what? $80 to $100 an hour, and you put an amp in and then the ground goes bad and you have to spend 15 to 20 minutes to trying to figure it figure out figure that out yeah. 
If you have to do that five times a year, you've just paid for that kit, and you could do a whole bunch of cars with that kit. And they so, are awesome. There's always a thought yeah. process. All there. right, uh, Bobby, uh, Stinker Full Thousand Six Channel RCA, twenty bucks on Amazon. What? It's a Stinger kit or a knockoff? It's probably a Stinger kit. Now, you brought up an interesting subject, Bobby, on why the new Stinger X exists, because the new Stinger X is a protected line. See, what happens, just like anything else, when you have the internet involved, is there can be some less than desirable people out there that are not interested in making any money or, or keeping product value where it needs to be. So, you know. Where can we find the ground kit? You can go to go closer positiveground.com and you can order it directly on there. Or if you're a dealer and you're a Metra dealer, you can get that from Metra in their install bay. Yeah, Both of them definitely. Have it. And there again, it's not cheap, but it is the best grounding system you're ever gonna find. I should do a video on that because we could probably knock one of those videos out in like 15 minutes and only take me an hour to edit and then I can go to sleep early. Okay. Yeah, done. give it Woo. to me. Woo. I go for a longer done. run. Ha <laughs> ha! Works for me. Charge more Metro because you do well. it better. Correct. And yeah, that's my motto sells. too, Chris, and that's how we all feel. Uh, yes, Metro sells it. Okay, so what do we got here? Best four channel amp to do. Recommended to run Kicker 1001, and if not, okay, to run different brand amps. No, Kicker makes the, the KX series amplifiers that are phenomenal. Yep. And they make some big four channels. They even make an eight channel. Oh my God, yes. <coughs> in the marine line. In the marine line. Yeah. Which is awesome, because forget a four channel, you can actually buy the eight channel and go full active. Or they also make a six channel too. And that's the green line. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Version of the same amplifier. So it's, the eight channel is in the KX line. It's just green instead of red, and it's eight channels. Huh. So you can go active Bye, front, Mike. active Thank rear, you for or you can watching. do three way up front, coaxial in the rear. <laughs> I gotta get water. <coughs> I know, I know, we have to work on that, Wayne. Uh, it's just like, it's just sitting in the shelf right there, but we haven't have about? a chance. Uh, they oh, the Dayton? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think at this point, it'll probably be next Christmas by the time we get around. Next we'll Christmas, that. yeah. I mean, it's I gonna be a Christmas it present. Christmas. Um, Christmas that was my present. Christmas present to yeah. myself, but yeah. Uh, how do you decide where to tap through the ground? Also, how do you use a multimeter to test a ground point? Mm, those are both good questions, and we're going to film a video on that one. Yeah. Um, we've actually come up with the hardest way to do that, and as soon as I get some time, I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. But continuity between the battery and the where you're planning on do it right. is a really good place to start. Continuity yeah. is the little squiggly line one. Right there. That when you tap them, and then you can measure the resistance between the ground underneath and the ground in the back. Um, well, I mean, it's a lot. I mean, definitely we have. As far as where where you're gonna tap, that's a great question. Now, a lot of the times in most cars, you can find some form of factory ground. There's a lot of them now, which is really nice. Uh, you know, some of the newer cars, it's like, hey, there's a ground there. It's pretty cool. But never drill through the floor pan because you never. For one, you have to look what's underneath you. Now, if you're doing a truck, you can get away with that because. It's a truck, but in a car, never, because most of the time they're running brake lines and fuel lines, and especially in a Honda, Jesus. Um, a lot of the times the running, the side rails are a good option if you're going underneath the seat. Some of the seat, not the seat rails, but the mounts for the seats are good options because those are reinforced steel into the car because they have to hold the seat. So those are good places to go into. I thought that Rockford Mini T amps, they're, they're two ohms only. Uh, no. The, the oh, sorry no the 750.1 is a uh, it's a one oh one oh yep okay yep uh what why what does that do the rockford mini temps do birth sheets at two, ohm, two ohm as, as well as, well as one ohm. i think they just do maximum power output and that's yeah it's maximum whatever whatever you can okay, get out hang of. on let me All check right, this one. Oh, haley what's up haley this one besides bass roll off on oem radio does the eq curve change as the volume goes up. Ooh, yes. Okay. A lot of the times it does. Sometimes no, but a lot of times it does. And that would be called loudness, believe it or not. When you have your aftermarket radio and you hit the loudness button, that's what you're describing. So 
Loudness was a cool thing that was uh, made by some nerds in college doing something. And what it is, is it boosts the low frequencies and the high frequencies when you're at low volumes. Yeah. And then as you turn the volume up, the loudness actually starts to taper off. It's a smart EQ in a sense, but it only is boosting low and highs. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's no reason to think that in a factory system, it won't do the same thing. But that's not a bad thing because more than likely when you're going to be setting up your EQs and crossovers and stuff like that, you're gonna be doing it at a higher volume yeah. to where that stuff is already negated. So there you go. All right, okay. if you want any tools, the tools that we use every day in here, just go to dnftooldrawer.com. <laughs> yep. So, Mike, that is a wonderful question. If you were here a little while ago, we could have asked Lori that question, and she would have dodged that bullet like a, yeah. like like Neo in the Matrix. Just like, um, honestly, nope. we don't know when no, it's coming. No, not it's yet. just one of those products that um, you know. Still in the open. If you if you follow if you if you saw the show where, where I got to go out to kicker. One of the things that I really should have emphasized the point on, but I think was kind of loosely talked about, was that it is more important for them to do something right than it is to do something. So they're not in any hurry to get anything to market. Because if you want to think of any one company that is under a microscope of like, oh, God, it's them. They did it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's kicker. I mean, they have so much hater out there that for them to release something that isn't exactly what they want it to be it's not worth it for them so it's coming it's cool the secrets out of the bag so we know it's coming it's just a matter of they want to make sure it's what they're wanting it to be yep um what's that all right right there right there how do you how do you how do you how do i get to your store to buy a crimper yeah, it's under cool. the yeah okay you yeah, yep, okay that one. okay Sorry. it's under like the hand tool section yeah Scott, i just installed a ddx 395 and a 200 2000 jeep yeah jt okay yeah JT. i put a prime 500 no, for the base is really weak. The what base could is be wrong really <sighs> So, are they, first off, are they wired backwards? Meaning the polarity on the woofers is wrong. So, what you can do is take a small nine volt battery and you can pull your speaker wires out of the box. Mark, well, not pay any attention what you think is positive and what you think is negative. You can also do it at the amplifier, which would probably be the better place to go because then you'll be able to see where you went wrong. But either way, what you're gonna to wanna to do is take, what happened? That was my water. Drink. Take your little nine volt, and you're gonna put positive on positive, and you're gonna tap negative, and the woofer should move. And you wanna make sure they're both going the same direction. If one is going the opposite direction, sucky. Now, you could also just walk out there, take one woofer, flip it, turn it on, and see if it gets louder. But if you yeah. wanna make sure you have them both moving in and out, as opposed to out and in, um, that is one thing to do. Secondly, it is a Kenwood. <clears throat> so you want to make sure you use the sub output and not the rear or the front it goes rear front sub on the back of the radio yeah totally crazy so if you it got happens. any one of those backwards then that will be an issue too yeah. but those are really the two things off the top of my head you might want to check first uh, why do more companies use parametric EQs versus graphic E found an old ADS pow Ooh, power plate brings back memories so why use a parametric EQ versus a graphic EQ? And this is a really great topic that our buddy Ken Ward over at Educar talks about a lot at Knowledge Fest. Um, and I'm gonna use his explanation for it. So if you take an RTA that has 31 bands and you have a 31 band EQ, that means that these frequencies match up to these frequencies. So in theory, and when you're looking at the output or the sound coming from the car, from your microphone, you should be able to slide sliders up to match where you have dips and holes. Wonderful, right? That's 31 bands of predetermined frequencies. What happens when it's not in one of those predetermined frequencies? He calls it combing, where you expand out past 31 bands and go to let's say 62 bands or 124 bands now you're going to see the signal just go to poo and there's going to be a lot more of these ups and downs teeth combing that's why they call it combs because it looks like a like an old school black comb if you have just a 31 band EQ, Upside, Joe, happy Monday, buddy. now what do you do 
A parametric EQ, on the other hand, will solve this issue because you can take that one frequency and you can move it left, you can move it right because it's not fixed. Then, you, of course, you can move it up and down just like you can on the regular graphic EQ. Mm -hmm. But then, because we're doing this, okay, and for the, you guys know Amen. what this is, but then you can really show your love because then you can do this. Okay, hmm. so this is the Q factor. And what this is doing is so you have a problem and you have this mess over here. You can find that center frequency simply by moving your parametric EQ left or right. And then you can adjust it up a little bit or down a little bit and take your Q and go wide. And then it'll just grab all those frequencies in this messed up area and fix them. So when you buy something like the Alpine, PXE0850S or the DSR1 that have 31 bands of parametric equalization, you can literally take and maybe do eight or nine adjustments via the parametric EQ and fix the whole thing. You might even be able to do like three or four. I can't remember on my car because I have the Alpine. I think I used four bands, maybe five bands. I just went in and through using parametric, knocked the whole thing out. Way faster, way cooler. Oh. But there again, a little bit more scary. Uh, for harness, dash kits, antenna adapters, you can go to packaudio.com, also metraonline.com. Um, yeah, you can check all the harnesses, dash kits that you need. To Sorry, apply. John. Uh, you predict 2019, the year of the three inch speaker. Ah, uh, still feeling that way? Nope. <laughs> nope, nope. Sorry. Um, I was, I was excited about it, and I, I thought. You know, Kenwood came out with a two inch and a three inch, okay. and, which was funny because Saturday we ended up using both of them, you know, yeah. It, yeah. which is weird because yeah. it was like, hey, wow, we need both of them. And that was really great. And uh, when we were at Knowledge Fest, the Prima line of Audison had theirs, just mm -hmm. looks a lot similar to the Morel we just showed you earlier today. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that high frequency mid range was all exciting at the beginning. I, I, I just, I thought it would go further. I was let down. But hey, it happens. Maybe next year. All right. We'll see. Uh, have you ever had a chance to play with the Kenwood Exelon KMM X503 Mechalis Unit 5013 Band EQ Time Alignment and only 130, 130 bucks. bucks. Yeah, Sounds we just promising. put one in the other day. <clears throat> it is very promising. Yeah. Nice thing about those radios. Uh, and a lot of the radios, most of these radios now, believe it or not, from both Kenwood and Pioneer are coming with 13 band EQs, time correction, all kinds of fun stuff like that. The one thing about the Kenwoods that I like over the Pioneers is when you mm -hmm. can get the one that has the tweeter adjustment in the crossover, has tweeter attenuation. Um, it's not, it's, it's a, like a band pass, which means there's a top for the mid range, but it's just a top in the tweeter range, mm -hmm. so you can actually. Um, like when we're doing passive crossovers and we set it, you know, you have negative, positive, and zero. So we'll set it to negative. This allows you to go in and do that in the radio. So like if you've set it to zero and then you're in the car and the driver's tweeter is just a little bit louder than you want it to be, you can go into the radio and turn down just that driver's tweeter negative three. Magic. Yeah, I love it. Uh, Power yeah. has really priced two and a half inch minutes. Yes, they do. Uh, John, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Jack, yes, yes, we've done plenty. Uh, most time 15, no problem. So, yes, if you want the most reasonably priced two and a half inch on the market, funny you should match Power Base. <laughs> Oddly enough, I just so happen to have a pair right here. <laughs> Um, so for those of you guys that are wondering what the heck he's talking about, um, and they're actually, I think they're, they've had theirs out the longest. This thing has been out for a really long yeah. time. This was made to replace the speakers in the top of a Jeep Grand Cherokee. And it goes right in. It even comes with the speaker wire soldered onto it because you wouldn't have room to put the terminals on. It's got the same, where's that cool white, where's your white thing? Yeah, I think that. It's got the, the same little notches on that side that you would for a Jeep. But yeah, these, these are nice. We've actually, before everyone else got involved, we would take these when we were doing a factory, basic factory upgrade three-way set uh, and use these. So yeah, it's really, really cool. Yeah, uh, Christian, yeah, it's plenty power for those uh, L7s. Uh, the one that's, the 12, probably the 1200.1. The kicker one, the big one. Which one? 
the the kicker 1200. So I have the 18 and the 24 now, I think. It's the L712. Yeah, it's only like 700. Well, they have the 18 in the CX line, and mm -hmm. then they have a 16 in the KX line. Yeah, the 18. Now, now they came out with the 18. Yeah. Yeah. So there's there's plenty to choose from there. Mm -hmm. Um. So in your shaker system, the problem. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> so in the shaker system, it really depends on, okay, the speaker part is actually not the hard part. It's the integration part after that. So if you're just planning on replacing the speakers and keeping the factory amplifiers, that's where the problem is going to come in because it's really not a great idea. Without doing some form of even the smallest amplifier with possibly a DSP built into it, and my buddy Christopher McNulty would say, Avorza from Audison has eight channels with DSP in it, it's a really nice little amplifier, it's tiny. Uh, mm -hmm. That would be a great something. Then you can add any speaker you want into the mix. So then it just becomes, well, what type of music you listen to, and then we can fine tune that road to that road where it needs to be. But trying to integrate into the factory and to get a better sound there, that's where you're gonna have a problem because it's still tuned for those crappy Ford speakers and it doesn't sound very good to begin with. Now, if you're just looking for a simple upgrade and you just want it to sound a little better because those things suck that bad, there again, Powerbase is a company to think about only because yeah. they make a lot of these. Thank you, thank you. For Ford now, they make Borsa. a lot of perfect fit Ford speakers. No, they, they, it's not a Borsa, it's Borsa. Forza, it's Forza. It's yeah. with an F. F, it's with an F. Forza. A Borsa. <laughs> I, it's with an F, right? It's Forza. with an F. Yeah, I, I get it wrong. It's it's oh, yeah. yeah, but it's with an F. Cool shirt. Yeah. Thank you. You can get them at Teespring slash store slash five star. Um, okay. <sighs> what do we got? I figured I was gonna have to go amp and speakers. Amp and speakers would be great. Now there again, that's just one idea. Now in the 2016, it has the amplifier up in the kick panel. Mm -hmm. um, there you go, Christopher. Just put the model number of the. Thank Addison. you, thank, thank you, Christopher. You. Uh, we did a video on a Mustang, and I believe it was about that same year. You might want to go back into the install diaries and see if you can find that. It should be, it's probably a two part, but if memory serves, which it usually doesn't, but mm -hmm. I think it's a variable voltage output out of that radio. Because I think all we had to do was add in RCAs. RCAs on it. Um, and Sorry, now. RCAs. And now we couldn't at the time we, we didn't have a harness to integrate. We had to make stuff, but mm -hmm. now the um, <clears throat> iData RR, I, I'm, the, I'm sorry, the iData AR, AR harness mm -hmm. is the same harness that was in the Mustang. So there was a funky harness I couldn't find, and I was going through the AR harnesses just now to update came. my brain on what's available. Mm -hmm. And those that harness is the AR Ford harness for back at the amplifier. Nice. Yeah, nice. I was pretty excited. Yeah. So, yeah. something else. Uh, okay, what do we got? Uh, was he answering that question for him? All right, 804, great amp, yeah. Yes. Um, all right, yes, variable in a Mustang. Thank you, Jeff, but yeah, yeah so if, yeah, all right. So definitely go out and check it out. Now, I will tell you this, on the Mustang, if you have remote start, that's the fun part. So what we had a problem with is that we when we were doing, um, because uh, there's really no accessory. It's a, okay, so it's a five volt output to turn on the amplifier. So you have to do one of two things. You have to get a five volt to 12 volt converter to give you your 12 volts remote, remote output. That's the opposite of volt 39. So they do sell those on Amazon, you can get them. Um, or what we ended up doing is we, because we weren't using the center channel for anything, we took a Pack Audio LP72, which is a high level low level adapter with uh, DC offset sensing and we connected it to the center channel because for some reason that is the only speaker in the car that does not wake up when you remote start it. Remember the problem he was having? Mm -hmm. He remote yeah, started yeah, yeah. and wake up yeah, the stereo yeah. and if he was blasting the stereo the car would be sitting outside blasting. Mm -hmm. The center channel doesn't do that. I don't know why but they didn't connect it to the same probably because the door chimes don't come through the center channel so and there's no backup sensors attached to, to there's nothing attached to it to so the center, no. we found that mystery out we tapped into the center channel i don't think that made the video because that happened after the fact we found out but yeah because yeah that was, yeah that was i do not that. okay no problem if you don't have center channels no yep. problem all right okay but for those of you that do 
Speaking there you of go. awesome, are the Voce 6.5s a worthwhile step? Oh, well, yeah, totally. It's a totally different animal, though. But yes, the Voce are definitely a a, a step up from an R type. There's no question different about it. Different animal. You're gonna yes. find a much more different. detailed. Different. What? No, as I say, different animal. Different animal. You're gonna find the Voce are a lot have. A, have Okay, so if this is the detail in a Type R, right here, this is gonna be your detail in a Voce. And what I mean by detail is fine instruments and stuff like that. As long as you have an amplifier that can give you the resolution you need, you'll definitely be like, oh crap. Um, the tweeter alone will just blow your mind. Um, not to take anything away from a Type R. They're totally different guys. Um, uh, have a center speaker, but no remote start. All right, well, you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, but yeah, so, but, in hindsight, we figured out the two ways was either to go with a six to twelve volt up converter. Yeah. Or you're yeah. an animal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, power base XL oh, soft dome nice. mid range. Oh yeah, I haven't seen that one yet. All right, right here. Replacing six by nines and a Caprice with some six and a halves. Uh huh. Uh, that I had laying around. The factory speaker had a foam baffle behind them. Should I keep the foam baffle as it is? Cut the bottom out or leave it and remove completely with the mid bass response. I would keep the foam baffle. Yeah, yeah. We always try to keep those. If the factory puts them in, we try to keep them when we're done. Hey, it's Marty Dean. What's up, man? Do you ever do remote stars, alarms? I don't think you ever do a video, no. No, we'll never no. do a video on them. We, we do, do remote, remote stars, the alarms, we'll do a video but on no. them is because to do an alarm, you have, an animal. Have, you have to have access to software that isn't necessarily readily available because we're a directed dealer. We have uh, access to direct text. Depending on what soft, what brand you carry, they, they give you access and it's a locked access. So though you can go on to an, uh, some internet, so like Bulldog Security sometimes puts stuff up like that. Um, without having that access, it, it's gonna make it very hard for you to install an alarm. So I don't wanna do a video on something that, if you'll notice the videos, we always try to, to, to bring you along for the ride and show mm -hmm. you how we do things. If I can't do that, then to me it's just kinda like, haha, look what we can do. And I, I don't really find that all that compelling. So that's why we don't do the videos on the alarms. It's nothing like that. Well, and by well, the way, if well, any well, guys well. want those cool Aussie irons, those are the cool cardless that I, I, we currently don't have. Nope. But, Excellent. You guys watching the uh, the Saturday live show of the Knowledge Fest, Marty Dean. Yeah, he sells he's, Aussie he sells Irons, AussieIrons.com. Um, I just got to call him, really? Yeah. I just got to call him because I'll order two. Call, I, call just, him, I want our him. logos on them. Yeah. All so, right. Uh, wait. I'll order two <laughs> I didn't say. Uh, what do you like better? Focal or Odyssey? Ah, uh, Focal. All right. I'm not, I mean Focal. Um, but for okay, different products. Like I like Focal speakers. I like Audison amplifiers. Um, mm -hmm. So there we go. Um, just like, but if I have my choice now, if you said Focal or Morel, he's gonna pick Focal. Okay. I'm gonna pick Morel because I like the Morel speakers way better than I like the Focal. So, um, and you asked the other day at Knowledge Fest what car did we like the best, and Saturday we decided on it was Brian's Arc car. We, we pretty much decided was the best sounding car we heard while we were out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. that was that. So, no, you know, and honestly. That is pushing the buttons. So. Um, I, I didn't, she sit, always in, I didn't buttons. sit in your car yet still to this day. Still haven't sat in the S2000. And you know what? So your car didn't get included as, so it could be better than yeah. mine. We yeah. just never got to sit in it yeah. to hear. Yeah. Um, that was a good safe we'll move there. Yeah. Uh, that's and, right. And honestly, still like. Products. Uh, yep. Okay. I, I was I was talking with Ada. Yes. And then Ricardo came out, and I was about to tell him, "Hey, let me let me hear the, the car." And for some reason, we just like hang, <laughs> never hear it. I'm like, ah. so, And so uh, uh, he says, Morel Maxwell is a great speaker, and Casey, full disclosure, works for Morel. Um, <laughs> goes, and that's why I love him. And that's why I love Casey. <laughs> you know, exactly. Casey can call me up tomorrow. I'll be like, Bro, I'll be like, yes, whatever you need, bring it here. Oh, um, you know, because, you know, it's, dude, I love Aussie Irons. USA. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, but yeah, so I mean, and uh, there awesome. again, I feel like we had a debate on this on Saturday, so I don't want to rehash it because it really put me in a, in a really not great mood. Um, Pardon? brands and and loyalty and we, we shot up we, we did a podcast on this topic and i know we're jumping the shark here and i apologize but i feel like you can be a fan of many products have one love mm -hmm. you know and, and there again i've been married now for 
20 some odd years. We actually had this debate the other day because I was like, you call it what you want. I, for me, it's like 28, 29 years because mm -hmm. for me, when I asked you out that first night in October, from there forward, that was it because, you know, I didn't marry her for another three years and then we had Haley five years later. But I feel like she's, like, like she's you know, and this is getting cheesy, but, I, you know, she's the one love of my life. Okay. Yeah. But that doesn't mean, like, there's, you know, Kate Beckinsale's an extremely hot woman. Yeah. You know? And, no, and you, like, like, so you can you appreciate, appreciate the yes, finer exactly. things in life. Yeah. So, you know, you know yeah, there definitely. you go. Um, it is, it's, I feel you can like more than one thing, but yeah. you can love just one, but you can like a whole bunch. You just got to remember where you park your car at night. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Loyalty is important for stores. Clients need to choose to whatever. Yeah. yeah, but you know, exactly. so and, and yeah. unfortunately for us, and even Ada, I mean, he carries an obscene amount of high-end product. Um, there you go. See, uh, Sean is like uh, he loves Android phones, but he hates the Android hate units. There you go. Well, I hate it's Android best. phones, but I like an S10. I like the camera. I would have it just for the camera. Yeah. If I could yeah. walk around and just take pictures and not do anything else with it, I'd buy it. that. That would be it. Because I, they, Dude. Android has much better cameras than iPhones. Yeah, but you. And have being a camera, cameras, I got cameras out there. Dude, watching. you have yeah, I know. cameras. I know. I still love it when I'm thinking I got five thousand dollars worth of camera and I'm using my iPhone. Hell yeah! <laughs> uh, stop with our head, Dean. The, the couch, couch is, is not fun. fun. <laughs> Dude, I've been sleeping on the couch for a week now because I can't breathe. So. Oops. She snores. I go sleep on the couch. I snore. I go sleep on the couch. <laughs> How does that work? Ugh. Well, Anyways, she owns the house. Yeah, probably. Oh, uh, uh, just because you order your food don't mean <laughs> you can't look at the menu. <laughs> oh, That's us. Awesome. You know, That's I knew awesome. when I jumped the shark on this one, everyone would go along for the ride. What's your recommend to replace the factory speakers in the 2014 Accord? There again, uh, without knowing the type of music you listen to or the type of budget you have, if you want to play it safe, there are brands like... Uh, yeah? Rock Kenwood, uh, Kenwood, Alpine. These are safe brands, Sony. okay? Meaning yeah, they do. sound good. They yeah. don't necessarily sound great. They can sound great depending on what you do with them. But there again, you know, when you want to get into that like refined sound, then you're going to want to start asking what type of music you listen to. Yeah. So, for example, we've been talking about here Focal, Morel, Audison. Those are three really high end brands. Depending on the type of music you listen to, they're going to excel at one of those things. The type of music I listen to, the morale sounds really great for those. And it, it just pleases my ears and my, you know, and Sony, ah. yeah, exactly. Uh, Sony makes the GS. <laughs> there again. The great speaker, amazing price point. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, so you can get into good sound and not have any idea of what you want and be like, be happy because it's, it's, it's like... It's like having a multi-tool, okay? Yeah. It'll do everything, everything you want it to. Is that better than having a Phillips screwdriver that fits perfect? <laughs> Not necessarily, yeah. but you can still take that screw out and do what you need to do. Yep. So there again, Alpine, Kenwood, Sony, they make really good speakers that do 90% of what you want them to do to make your car sound better. You got plenty, plenty to choose from. Um, um, Banda amplifiers. I never actually mm -hmm. got to touch one of those. It's one really? of the. Uh, have you have you seen no. the bandas? No. I haven't seen the bandas either. Never. Um, I, I'm assuming, if memory serves, it's it's a uh, Latin American amplifier. Okay. Um, maybe I might be wrong on that, but I thought uh, it was. I, I think it was more like a sound digital style amplifier. Um, okay, his volume. <clears throat> okay, junk. Okay, uh, he doesn't like them. Uh, what amplifier does? Remember, we're not. We can't. We no, 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 no. Like everybody uh, can pick whatever they want. does they not have a high hissing sound when the gain is at three o'clock. Okay, so that's called floor noise that you're hearing. Um, or you just have the gain input sensitivity t turned up too high. If you have a small amplifier and you have your gain turned up high, that's telling you that you need a bigger <laughs> amplifier. How do you eliminate uh, gain hiss? Bigger amplifiers. Because if you think about it, when you have the gain hiss down and you're playing it at that level, really that's the amount of volume. So if you go through and you, and you use oscilloscope or DD1 or you do the math to figure out where your gain needs to be, all right, and you're playing it and it's not at the volume you think it should be, so you go back and turn up the gain. That's not how gain works. Gain is not a volume control. It's a level match, the output of the radio to the input of the amplifier. That's all it's designed to do. Now, if you're playing it and it's not loud enough, 
has um, Sage said in the training, you need a bigger amplifier. And that's it. That's the God's honest truth. You need a bigger amplifier. Now, if you got something that's 2,400 watts and you're like, I got my gain turned up or down and I'm still getting gain hiss, you might need a better 2,400 watts. <clears throat> So there you go. Um, hey James, uh, sometimes we have so many um, questions. Uh, so if you, we don't answer you, whatever you question, that's why we have these type of shows. So you can put the um, the question that you have, whatever you need. <laughs> if you, we can answer it, there you go. We try. We do the we best try, we can. Man, sorry. And with that, we're gonna try no more because we're gonna try to get on with the rest of the week. It's Monday, so yay! There we yeah. have. Some of you guys got four more days of this crap. We got five more days of fun and excitement to look forward to. But on the end of those days will be Saturday, which means we'll be back at it again to answer more of your questions right. with the YouTube live show. It's been fun, guys. Remember, as Fernando's pointed out throughout the show, DNF Tool Drawer is a place where you can find all the cool tools that we use. We just updated it a month or so ago to See you guys. have a lot Thank of the you. new things that we've been having in the videos. So definitely go ahead and head over there and check it out. Teespring slash store slash five stars, a place where you can get shirts like the ones we're wearing and 10 other different shirts. If you caught us during Knowledge Fest, we had a bunch of different shirts on. Addiction was one of my favorites. Yeah. And then Patreon is the place where you can go to support the show. We appreciate you very much. You get a twice a month video version of the podcast, which I should have up either tonight or tomorrow yep. will be the second installment for this month. <clears throat> as well as if you go to Podbeam, iTunes, yep. or Google Play, you can get the audio version of the podcast. The podcast is a half hour of us discussing one topic that is somehow related to car audio. It's, not Derek. it's a lot of fun yeah. for us, and that's why we do it. Yeah, um, and see you guys later. That was rough. Bye. Uh, you're gonna hit Derek. Derek is gonna hit a hundred thousand way before. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He has found it. the He's magic button it. over there. Yeah. Oh my gosh, way to go! No sunglasses dude. today, huh? Uh, no sunglasses today. We're sorry. No, sorry. I, I, I that gotta, was only two, man. I gotta talk to Eric. I wanna see if I can get us some more because that was a big hit. Um, okay. but hey, thank you guys so much as always. Uh, you guys have a wonderful Don't forget to call safe Marty week. Dean. I do need to call Marty. Dean. Yeah. Uh, who won the sunglasses? I don't want to give out their names. But, uh, because I honestly don't know, but hang on, I'll, I'll end with that. Give me one second. Uh, it was a Haley post. Haley picked them, so if it was anything, it was her fault uh, if you didn't get one. So, um, uh, it was an Aaron and a Matthew. Aaron and, and one Matthew. of them lives in New Zealand, and I don't remember where the other one lives because I just emailed it to Sue and said, there mail them. But, All right, no, guys. I'll see if we can get some more. You guys have a great night. See we'll you see Saturday. You yep. Bye.